the 17 taking a look at our second game of the second series cloud nine facing off against execration very important matchup for both of these teams i'm lyrical joined as well by the wonderful man himself mr ben merlini Wu. how's it going buddy it's going great you know we've been watching some good dota uh like i think it was like the second ever mega creep comeback that i got a chance to check that out and this game of course w was not that in the last series they didn't come back from the mega creeps they got owned um but Switching things up, they're going to take a lich. <laughs> LFY. Uh, apparently LFY is doing some different strategies this time around now that they're guaranteed first place. But we'll see if the old strats that they were showing before is going to be enough to carry them through in this next game with a Sand King Puck opening from Execration. Again, they're getting what they want with the exception of the Nyx that was taken away. AUI Doom. Greedy, greedy position four and a not so greedy position five. That's a pretty good balance, I would say. Also, Doom has some slight mana, or sorry, slight armor issues, so Lich helps with that. Pretty good synergy in between these two. Do you think there's any chance it ends up being an MSS Doom? Uh, AUI usually plays it. Okay. So, the issue with Cloud9's lineup last game. Uh, Nyx destroyed pretty much any form of initiation that they had because he was really good with the carry pick. so that's also Terrorblade was not I do not believe it was that it also can be rectified in the draft I actually don't think their play was that bad oh the Lycan Wolves are also but that's just more if I were centric or we need to smoke more off either or yeah and they feel now as if they're in this awkward spot where like you need to, they're, they're completely changing up their draft. Uh, they're, they're switching up their styles. Um, and sometimes that can be quite good and, you know, give them the fortitude and the, a new way of looking at the game. But um, also, Execration, they're not really being stopped in what they want to do. I'm assuming that Raging Potato still can have this puck here if he wants it. Uh, they can also run it in the mid lane. Um, I'm trying to figure out, like, with the Lich Doom, is there anything you're trying to accomplish early? Do you, like, really put the hurt into mid lane or maybe help oh, out? You don't know their lanes. It also limits the... Uh, Lich and Doom both limit the amount of uh, Doom owns a lot of heroes. And Lich Frost Armor also owns a lot. You have to, like, you have to ask your cores on creation what exactly they want. It could be still be a Drow strat too. Drow strat is my Cloud Nine team. I... Doom's not that great for strat. Lich is also. I don't know. It obviously makes a puck off lane that much better as well. But Sand King, uh, I don't know if I would say it's fallen off as much. More that other heroes have gotten good. While the position for Sand King can still be quite strong roaming around the map, you get like our uh, Tranquil Boots and uh, an extra wind lace on top of that if you want, and Burrow Strike, and you start making kills happen even before Blink. A good four. Arc Warden also banned. I don't know if that's one of the heroes that hasn't been seen yet. I'm not sure. But it's been all over the NA pubs recently. I think, I'm pretty sure it's been picked. Do you like Arc Warden as a hero? <sighs> Yes. I think he provides a lot. He provides split push, decent team fight, decent high ground. He, I think most importantly, scouting with the ghosts in the early. Take out the drow. Don't want to get pushed down. They banned out both pushers. Still Lycan, but Lycan's... Lycan's so sober. It's not, it's not poor. It's not great. I think the fuel carries are pretty good. Uh, Weaver, perhaps. Weaver's really good versus Lich and the fusel carrier and Lincoln. up with it all and i guess that the other thing about this is since they've revealed their heroes this early it, normally like an answer would be try and run something like a chen to punish the fact that these heroes aren't great at like wave clearing but doom's quite good against chen so work as well i don't know if there's anything else that you can really exploit with this since they've already banned out the drow Taking a lot of reserve time here, Execration. I guess that's one of the downsides of having such a open draft is that you can kind of go whatever way you want with it, but they're going to be taking the Witch Doctor, Mr. RR, I believe. 
but it's quite unusual. Not that many teams pick Witch Dog. I don't even know how many. I believe it's one of the most picked heroes for Fnatic, which isn't. I mean, they haven't been doing the best at the tournament, clearly. Uh, but in Southeast Asia in particular, it was uh, all over the qualifiers for it. Yeah, they, it doesn't combo well. I guess it's okay with the fun. Generally just viewed support now. Faceless Void now taken as well. So far? Yeah. Uh, this possibly the night pick, but it's also just pretty good with the Lich overall. This playing. Feels like they're really trying to build up a lot of team fight here. They've got all heroes that are great at it. Likewise, Vex Creation find the jump and you know maybe able to get off a waning rift onto a you know, or onto a faceless void or something like that. Then all of a sudden your initiation kind of gets destroyed. Um, and as far as in lane, how do you deal with like a puck off lane? Because last time around I felt like the Shadow Shaman should have been able to be really good against it, but they had a dual lane. Yeah. Yeah. They had the Nyx. Nyx there. So they expect the MSS. Ursa pretty good. He is not that great versus Doom. Doom can literally just run out to him and do it. Can't do a damn thing about it. Ten seconds remaining. So that's a problem. But good defusal blade carrier. Good versus void in lane. Pop your ulti before good. Just not in Britain. Yeah, and like normally it sucks having to build like a BKB and an Axe on this hero, but having to think about like maybe building a Lincoln's, uh, that sounds even worse. But they did pick it into this lineup, so I guess just wanting to hit that timing before Doom can get into initiation items. Yeah, I would expect more something like a PL. PL, like these guys, has problems with illusions. And Doom also has problems. Might have been. They still could pick it as their last. Cloud Nine probably wants. To, uh, I guess he could probably pick something like I like Death Prophet here. The long duration of silence, very good for Sand King and Puck. Also synergizes with Faces Void. Uh, some sort of team fight hero because they did not have any team fight. Occasionally he would follow up. At, for the most part, he wasn't really doing that much. In his team objectives are getting. It's crazy. His teamwork was far. The Death Prophet will promote a lot of objective team fight. What other heroes? Classic. Eternal Envy Medusa. Or Fada. I guess it could be Fada as well. I think Fada played it. They did it mostly with Medusa. The one game that they won. First. Five seconds remaining. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, and certainly, you know, helps to ensure a little bit more of that late game as well. Um, Stone Gaze against the Ursa seems like it'd be pretty annoying to deal with. Uh, yep. Their overall lineup is very slow. You, you start heating up like... 15, 20 minutes, and then even like 30 minutes, you're still heating up and warming up a little bit. Still in preheat mode. And then 35 plus, I would say. Fully baked. Yummy, yummy. That up. Oh, there's always a consideration of the... Oh, man, PL's even better now. Versus the... Actually, that's a good point. Some people some people say the Ags counters illusion heroes, but I think... Uh, I, think I still think PL's pretty good. Maybe... Could also be AM. I, I think AM's not that great. Yeah, I mean, that's the danger of taking the Medusa in the fourth pick, and certainly Ursa or Puck, they're mobile enough in terms of what lanes you can throw them in that can kind of be whatever Execration want this draft to be, and they will have the last pick. So the last pick from Cloud9 comes out. It's going to be the Batrider. So, and immediate <laughs> anti -mage. Okay. Yeah, Anti-Mage is fine. I would have expected either Anti-Mage or PL. I'm very surprised that Cloud9 did ban out the... Uh, I would have been out PL if I were Cloud9, because I think that they do need some big mana burner to deal with. 
uh, because you their high ground's pretty good, right? Faces Void plus Lich, but it's really good. Frost Army to Towers and beating Chronos is is huge. But uh, yeah, I think Doom can do well. Just though, a couple yes. interesting picks here as well. Like look at look at who's playing what. You've got Envy on the Void, and it's going to be Raging Potato on the Ursa, which means James is the puck. They, they do switch up their lanes on occasion so that it would be like James offlane puck and like Rage of could play mid, but I'm not sure. Kind of a, an interesting look. Is there a way that you would like to see this lane from Execration? Do yep. you, want... you want the puck versus the Dusa so okay. you can face shift all the, the snakes. All right. Or else you most heroes just get pwned by the snake and you can... Puck's one of the few ones that actually does very, very well versus puck. You have a lot of base damage. So you can outlast hit Medusa, and you have face shift to dodge every single snake. Snake is very slow projectile. Super slow. So does Lemic then head up top and help out Raging Potato and try and put the hurt to Envy? Um... Uh, third dire. Right. Oh, wait, sorry. Down bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mixed up. Likely. When will first blood happen? I am putting zero to three minutes. This is okay. this is going to be insanity. First charge on kill or since he yeah. plays the first most observer rewards by game end. Magical pure. Bat rider or puck? Okay. I'll give it the puck. Hmm. Gotten all my predictions wrong so far, pretty much. So it's been easy. Uh, <laughs> Raging potato has himself a boot start first startup. And Nando actually has a mid build for himself, so safe lane James on the puck, they are really switching things up a lot. Wait, who's mid? I think anti it's anti mage. Oh, anti mage is fine for Zuzu. Okay. I forgot about that map. I've seen it versus Storm, I believe. Uh but it's also pretty decent person. Who have a fair amount of base damage, a lot of armor, poor man shield to plink off her weak weak attacks, and you can burn all her mana. So to set up for kills. So we'll be what offlane Ursa. And we're actually seeing that it's a switch up now of the lanes where Eternal Envy is going to head up top with Pile Die. They don't want to face off against the Ursa. It'd be the worst thing. But Execration heading into the jungle. MSS playing it safe, realizing that they will be up there with him, and it will be a Bat Rider versus these three hero lanes at least for the moment. Actually, going to give the rune to Envy. Battle of Bruin. Pylai die, taking damage, but so too is James. He'll be able to jump away. Easy. No sacrifice. War. Oh, yeah. Well, I he, think Puck's versus... Uh, Puck versus uh, Faces Void is still pretty decent. Puck, Puck can get the Ooze build, which I've been seeing a lot more. Mm -hmm. Does he have that coming out to him right now? It's just a salve right now. Still could go for it. But Nando's having an okay time here mid. He's taking a little bit of pot shots like we were talking about. Um, as far as the pressure down bottom, it, I guess MSS can just sort of play it safe and hopefully he doesn't get ran at too much. I think they should actually just one of the heroes mid or top. Nando's getting, gonna get harassed by somebody. This is an awful lane for Nando. Two ranged heroes and a, one of them being a lich versus him. He's not gonna get that much farm. He also doesn't have any regen for him. The chicken's already in the top lane, so he's gonna need help. With this. Maybe once you build up enough of the lead with the Ursa, that's when you can make that happen. That Rider almost level two, which does put uh, Rage Potato in a little bit of the danger zone. He said, Lee Mick, he's gonna head towards mid. We see that RR has moved to the top, and James able to push back the rest of Cloud9 for the moment. Lee Mick, he's heading in. They know they're there. They have a reserve reward on the. These need to be able to pop that clear. Lich said two full clarities the entire time. I don't know if blinking in to stop it is the play, but. Probably overall take less damage. Uh oh. It's bottom lane. MSS. They had seven stacks on Raging Potato, but not going to dive for it. MSS maybe is dove a little bit too deep, able to trade off the aggro, but will not be brought down. 
you do stay alive, and yeah, like you said, that Calamity just gets maximum value. And he keeps on spamming out the spells. He didn't, oh, he didn't actually skill Mana Break yet. A lot better for him otherwise, but yeah. Well, he's taking a lot of raw supplies, so kind of see why. I know Papa's salve back out yet again. It's like Pile I Die just going to keep up the pressure, causing his life to be hell, and does have the mana break now. Um, this did also the dive that came out from MSS give Raging Potato a nice little bit of farm for himself. Almost level 4 after this creep, creep wave. Creep. <laughs> Elmer Fudd. <laughs> <laughs> Be very, very quiet. I'm not the bat rider. <laughs> Where did bat rider go? Oh, he went all the way home. Huh. He's fine. It's okay, man. I won't see both sides. Yeah. So. Oh. I mean, this is the worst, right? <laughs> you just keep on trying to get stuff from him. Nando's been 8 and 1 so far versus the 21 and 11 of Medusa. So they did shift Puck to mid. Still a little surprised they didn't do it earlier, but they, I did think that they expected a straight one on one. Now let's go into AM Flame. Screw you, Nando. <laughs> Pile I die, he's just making his life hell. That is not what you want to see. They really haven't been able to give him that much free space at all, and. I don't know, is is this a problem? Like a, a really big problem, or do you think that the Raging Potato? Um Raging Potato, is he dead? Yeah. Oh. Well, they have the stick charges, the stun comes out. He actually does manage to back out enough. Lemic making the space. Nice. But uh, how big is the problem that anti mage has just gotten completely shut down? Uh he can I think he's fine. You expect to get owned by the Lich. It's just a matter of who we get on. And Raging Potato has phase boots, right? That's the trade-off you're getting, which I, which I think is pretty good. Like, if you are re if you really want the AM to come back, you can just give him the Aegis instead of the Ursa. Okay. So, I, I think no matter how far behind he gets, it's going to be okay if they get him set up. They are. James. Yeah. Who's first? Yuck. RR is here too. They're going to bring in Lemic and try and find a stun. The Maledict damage coming out as well, but Fata far too strong for that to really end up mattering. It did force the rotations from the other heroes of C9. It gives a little bit of space for Nando top, as well as more for Rage Potato in the bottom lane. He's now heading over towards the shrine to use it. Both shrines being used. Be out of mana and Ending up against Nando, actually he's able to deal a good bit of damage. Yes, right. Yeah, now the Bear Man's gonna run at MSS again and maybe force a Firefly or at least the uh, Flame Break out of him. Is MSS trying to bait this out to see if he can make the play. Firefly used. Rage Potato just gonna back out. It shouldn't be under too much duress. They're trying to wrap around on top lane. A lot of heroes coming in now. Void does not have any mana, but with Frost Armor, that's not... That's just, it's so hard to actually do anything with it. Lemic does have Sandstorm. They could think about trying to steal away a couple of these stacks that have been made for the uh, Batrider, which would be quite nice. Where? In the uh, medium camp over here. I guess it's just the one stack. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think level 2 stands a week. 40 damage a second. 1100 HP with the If it were like Seder plus Wolf Camp, I'd That's one. This Raging Potato here. Just almost destroying MSS. Off the overpower and trying to run at him again. There is a courier that's moving in here in mid. There is more action going on as they're able to place down a ward. Looks like there might be a wraparound coming from RR2. They have only level 5 on Envy. I'm trying to keep track of all this action that's going on with people just sort of running around, but there still hasn't been a kill. That's the thing that's weird about this game. It's like a lot of movement, but no real... I trusted you, Gabe. 
<laughs> I said I thought it was going to be nuts, but it's just like, everybody wants to run away from each other. Just farm up, farm fest. There's a deuce in there. That's probably why. Oh, owie. Gets the stun, and they don't go for it. I had four stacks of Fury Swipes on him. Last second save. I mean, of course, it's going to be a kill onto James. Somehow the puck dies in the mid lane. What? Hey, how did the puck die while the earth? Maybe he thought he could destroy the snake. Which you cannot. Alright, well, seven and a half minutes in. Uh, we are still seeing an anti mage very, very poor relative to the other heroes in the game, at least in terms of the last hits. And would you say that this pace of the game favors the Medusa because there haven't been any kills and she can just farm up? If I were Execration, I'd actually probably prefer the Ursa get farm over there. Okay. Because I think you need heroes to create space. If Ursa is under farm relative to the AM, only the AM can do stuff with the minion. Now, where, whereas the Ursa, he's just going to be, what, an aura bot with like a, a Vlad's? I haven't seen often Ursa that often, but from my understanding, he can't actually do that much if he like, can't get in the fight. So him being farmed means they can do Roche, which means they can create space with them. So I would prefer this if I were... I don't think you want your puck to be this poor and give me a flood, but that's not really a decision. Well, maybe this is the comeback for him. They get the Maledict and the damage out. They'll find themselves a kill. It was a DD on James as well, so more than enough to finish that off. It gives space though for Fata to push the tower, try and take it down. And while there is a Chronosphere available on Envy, he keeps on not having enough mana to really do anything with it. Max Bash, the Max, Max Bash is fine. And he has uh, some stick charges in case they do try and gank him. If he hurts. RR just <laughs> lost about two-thirds of his HP to the last tick of a snake. Um, Fata showing that he's not that strong on the Witch Doctor. Only level 3 right now. Currently the lowest level in the game. We just ignore the Medusa. He's gotten too much, especially after that first. This is kind of worth your time. I'm surprised they haven't tried to match the Ursa versus the Face of Void. It's a really good matchup that they do. Like, even using him as a support a zoning tool so the AM can farm might be pretty cool. Or they can just get him farm. Someone coming up. Are they going to actually try Roshi? I think he's. Mm, Zero two three. That's a little risky. Yeah, it might be a little bit nuts. Um, and I think too, like you look right here, Rage of Potato just keeps on running at him. Aoi is like standing off to the side, doesn't have level six yet. But as soon as Doom is up, if Rage of Potato keeps making those moves, it could be an easy kill. I guess it's still a little bit tough because you have such high movement speed on Ursa. Can you have Zolt? Yeah. Sanking well, coming in from the side. It's like Witch Doctor, not so this move. Instead, kind of just back off. Yeah, they have vision of him right now as well. So, Lemek not going to catch anybody off guard. No. Certainly wouldn't describe this as a fast paced game, but a lot's been happening with movement. Execration, maybe going to look for now. Some type of a play to see if they can Three find smoke. a kill. It's going to be tough to kill Fada, especially with AUI right there, and especially with Stone Gaze up. This is not easy. I don't actually think they can burn him up with his mana before he Stone Gaze it. Well, Eternal Envy kills off Nando in the top lane, but the battle is going to be a Bruin as Fata will be off to the side. They managed to find a stun on Lemic, and well, they actually can't do anything. So Envy finds the kill with the Chrono, and in the bottom lane, they don't get a kill on Fata. Cloud9 pulling things together here, and Lemic almost able to take down Envy up in the top lane, but by virtue of the Frost Armor, as well as just his naturally high HP, Envy gets away. So, Dream Coil mid onto the Batrider, trying to kill him off. James not going to be able to chase him down. Still, there's more action down bottom as Rage of Potato almost dies to the Ursa. It's just like, Execration kind of running around altogether, but they're not really finding the any sort of like great fight for themselves. Their lanes are just completely mismatched. Anti Mage has been up versus Lich the most of the game. He's never been a, up against the Medusa in one on one, and the Ursa's never been versus the Faces Void. 
Uh, the Puck died versus the Medusa, which is supposed to be a pretty decent matchup for him. And Execrate itself not found an opportunity. But it should perhaps come out pretty soon. Raging Potato is still a little far away. 10 maybe? 25, plus 25 damage talent? Yeah, I don't know. I'm surprised they haven't been trying to force it because it would force Cloud9 to move away from the Roche. It forces Lich to stop denying creeps, give AM some space. Like, even if you don't do Roche, just the threat of it, I think, is strong enough. They aren't threatened. They're just walking. Ups. Yeah, it's going to sort of feel now like oh, they dropped the dream. That's play. actually really nothing. good for them. Look at what was behind. Two yeah. heroes smoked. <laughs> That would have been disastrous. Oh, now they're trying to bait it out. Raging Potato. They know he wants to get aggressive. Unfortunately, if he does, he might just be dead. And he's going to head back. Potato will not be cooked today. Oh, goodness. ET Mage has to get an iron. Down. That's how bad he struggled. Nice. Got treads. Uh, Ring of health. I mean, that being said... Uh, Cloud9 aren't really making that much happen around the map. Like, Tier 1 towers are still standing across all three lanes. So, it's not like this is being punished that heavily. Like, it's only less than a thousand gold lead. Does that really matter that much, though? Or do you think the fact that Medusa is getting this much farm is making up for that? I don't think the Medusa is getting that much. It really is, is making up for that. Are you going to die here? I'd say it's about a 50 50 chance. <laughs> Alright, Anti Mage. They'll keep him back R there as well. James also coming in. They have Silence. They have a Veil as well. They do not have Sentries though. Only Mick just sandstorming away, just keeps on hitting it, and there is oh, actually the potato. Is it DD? Notice that the Lich has phase boots, by the way. Yeah, he's been doing that build. I don't know why. Is it like phase boots with a Shadow Blade too? Uh oh. RR gets caught. There's going to be the Chronosphere down. And they do find that kill. Pilot Die snatching it away. Still no detection, I do not believe, for the Sand King. It's just going to TP back down towards bottom. Where I believe another Dream Coil was used by James. Oh, Raging Potato still has a tail end of TD. He's going to go into Roche. MSS did just TP to the top lane. I think they're going to ping it out right now. MSS could make a big play here if he lasts inside Roche. But it looks like he's going to try and get the 15 minute stack. Oh no! Yeah, oh wait, he's making it. Well, he's going to check at least. And Roche not low enough that they can really punish it. There is going to be the Lich, Chain Frost, what? and dead. What a flame break. <laughs> oh my god. No, that flame break was perfect. Yeah. He It pushed him so close to Roche that the Chain Frost bounced and he couldn't actually ulti it off. That was sick. Oh, I'm sure very frustrating for Rage Potato. This game has not gone it all the way they wanted it to. And uh, Killing Envy here would be great if they could actually make that happen, but it's still so hard to actually do. But the Silence comes out. They're able to get a good bit of damage, but Envy time walks it off out trying to move. He does get a little bit of lowered armor from that Mask of Madness, but not enough to make the difference. That's 400 HP. He's still sitting at pretty decent armor because he has the ice. Oh. Oh, he used Mana Breaker. He gets out. The Lich, gone yet again. Man. Yeah, they're getting really super right now. I, EY hasn't even hit level 10 yet. Raging Potato going in for a kill, but you're going to be hit with Stone Gate. Win. Or even worse, a Doom. And MSS is scouting the other side too, so if anybody happens to step too far forward, they will get punished. He doesn't have Blink Dagger, but does have the drums. And, and they're just sort of being bullied all around the map. Uh, granted, like... I don't know. It does really feel like Execration have put all of it on Nando, and he just has not gotten the farm that he needs, and, like, Ursa hasn't been able to do anything. Like, Cloud9 are just walking around in their jungle right now, as if they own the place. <laughs> Execration can't do anything to stop this. Yeah, this, uh, Lich face is quite awful. Kind of just destroyed them. Oh, oh, man, Lich Oh no, it wasn't meant to be. 
He gets taken down. Five to one. Three thousand net worth lead. But the scary part about that Smoke. is that's Fata on top. See Raging Potato sinking, smoked up. Blink deck on sink. Rush item. Are they gonna go down bottom and try and kill Fata? Yep. Play. Ooh, six sixty mana though. Oh, that's tough. All right, Lemic, they break the smoke. Nando down to nothing, has no mana at all. And Raging Potato, well, I guess that they're going to cut the creep wave now. Um, really odd situation. I, I don't exactly know how to read that, but I don't think they can kill Fata now. They've brought all these heroes down here. Execration, they're not really farming around the map. And I mean, Cloud9 took their mid-tier one tower and the top tier one tower. I don't know where they go from here. What, what would you be doing right now if you're Execration? Try and play around Roche. Push out bottom lane with Puck. Then try and sneak in Roche with your Blinks. Even use the smoke to get it. Just ignore the Medusa. You have AM to counter her anyways later. Okay. Kill Envy. When he doesn't have Frost Armor, preferably. Medusa, oh. or, sorry, the Doom is always around Roche. Maybe that's not the best avenue for them. But Amazon's going to have Blink Dagger soon. What are they going to do about that? Yeah. They really don't have a great answer. And E comes in now with Pylai Die. They have their Chain Frost back off cooldown. Ursa's going to blink away. There, there are three heroes down here, including two cores, and they don't really get anything. And now they're just forced to run away from them again as soon as that one rotation comes in. Five to one, the net worth graph continuing to be skewed into the favor. Cloud nine and the Chronosphere dropped. Anti-Mage in trouble. Raging Potato ready to jump back in in a second, but they doom him as well. There is no answer. Witch Doctor Ultimate not going to do a damn thing. Is Envy ready to chase him? Maybe, possibly. Somehow they can kill off MSS. He's taking that damage, but the Enrage was already there. Ragey Potato wanting to kill him, wanting to chase anything at all for the big bad bear man, but it's not going to happen. And now Ragey Potato going to fall. The coconuts are bouncing. Is it going to be enough? They kill up MSS at long last, and Owie also going to die. It's actually three that fell from Cloud9. How did Envy die? <laughs> I have no idea. He took, I guess, Ursa blew him up? Probably. I didn't actually see. I thought he was okay. Yeah, maybe the puck plus the uh, Ursa burst combined. Good Chrono. Good Doom. Medusa was not there for the majority of the fight. For Lincoln's versus is decent. Yeah. But not that much right click damage from her. I mean, you mentioned earlier that Anti-Mage does counter her later. Uh, how bad of a counter is it? Is it something where, like, he's just going to be able to take over the game, Nando? And the, the... It's decent. It's not amazing. Okay. But I think the later the game gets, the better it is for Anti-Mage. Alright. I see what you're saying. Because your illusions get more and more tanky as the game goes on, and... Medusa's damage doesn't scale equivalently to AM. And if you can't kill the Illusions quickly, they just do so much damage. Well executed gank there. MSS, the Blink Dagger reveals hello. both of those heroes. MSS waiting for this. Roche to get a little lower. I think they want to try and actually take the Aegis from them, but at least for now, they're going to be able to take down that Ursa, find a quick kill. RR in the area as well as Lemic. They've already used Epicenter as well as Dream Coil. He is in some trouble. Burrow Strike is going to clip Envy, but he will still be able to find a stun. And now Chrono dropped on the Sand King. It's going to be the death of him. It's looking like Cloud9 wanting to wait until Ursa brought Roche low enough where they can take it themselves. Glorious, glorious Ben Rider. Scourge of the Roche Pit. MSS is going to be able to force back James. So, Roshan, first one, not going to the Ursa team. And really it's Envy bad. that has the Aegis. Very, very bad. Nando does have Battle Fury. It's like a 20 minute Battle Fury. Oh, hi. Oh, oh. my god. Alright, that is depressing. Buy oh. your items. Oh. Well, that is really rough now. And 
the the ways in which Execration are able to make this work are few and far between. This might be one of them, though, if they can find that kill. Burn through the Aegis. Now need to run away, though, because Stone Gaze is there. Fata trying to find the angle. Can they do it? Blade Mill out as well. It's starting to bounce back and forth. The coconut's hitting. The damage being dealt. Raging Potato. Can he kill off Fata? It would be huge if he could. It doesn't look like it's going to quite happen, though. MSS pulling him back in. Sandstorming, but they have vision. Damage being dealt, and Lemic going to fall. Three dead for Execration. You add in the anti mage. Say hello to Frost Armor. Greatest enemy. Oh, he's not even going for a Diffusal Blade. Oh, Ursa. All right, well, 13 to five, Cloud9 putting their woes behind them as they've been able to find a winning successful strategy, at least for now. Yeah, I think they're sufficient to have the hell for the anti -war. Because of that, they can rest easy going into the mid-game stretch where Faces Void combined with pretty much any hero can kill the anti mid right now. Maybe even solo if he gets a couple, a couple of lucky bashes. Well, and it's not really like the other heroes are lacking for the follow-up either. You've got Blink Dagger that's there for MSS, and if you pull him into range, I mean, he's getting closer to a Force Staff, too. Almost has it completed. Uh-oh. Owie. Shadow Blade does not have Doom, though, so Raging Potato will not be the one who ends up falling right now. Look at Witch Doctor's build, too. No point in the Voodoo Restoration, just all damage. Good versus Doom, so bad versus Doom. Doom can heal up a lot through Scorch or some Meldic will hit, and also he can't heal up some Meldic. And they don't have the Aegis to play around. Biggest issue, like, you can't take Doom. Alright, well, 24 minutes in, 13 to 5, and they drop the Dream Quill on Afada. Looks like they want to try and take him down again. They have the Mana Burn, Blade Mail there as well, but is it going to be enough damage? Doom is already down and maybe doing its duty as they do see Anti-Mage falling low. Fata almost dead, is going to die. Raging Potato jumps in further. He's going to get lassoed as Pylai die. Just trying to keep the rest of them from his team. Raging Potato in rage, right clicks on a Pylai die. They get the Chronosphere, only caught out Lemic, and well, they also are going to be able to find the Witch Doctor. So four dead as it looks like finally James will be cleaned up as well just about out of mana, out of time and Cloud9 dominant they threw everything they had at Lusa, but she was able to get her blade mill off, she even got her stone gaze off after popping her stick still in poppy mode Ursa gonna continue continue to fall off going for basher tough. They're going to have damage. I mean, is there anything else that you can really do, though, besides just hope that Anti-Mage gets farmed out of control? Like, you it, hope. Make <laughs> You make it happen. Make him the man <laughs> that you want him to be. Be a man. That's a great song. Oh, Owie's just a move on song? Okay. Yeah. Well, Nando certainly needing to make that happen for himself. Uh, it's trying to go towards the Manta style. But Medusa now with Lincoln's Blade Mail and a decent amount of the way towards the Butterfly. But this Shadow Blade on Owie is just so hard to contend with. Let's see if you cold. There you go. Really nice talent. I think it's insane. Better than GPM talents. Mo this, I think it's better than every level 10 by a large margin. You get, uh, if you cast it every single time on cooldown, it's like 100. Oh, look at this. Howie, he's moving in right now. They're able to burrow strike, jump him down. They have the sentry as well, so he's already gone. Now they get the coil onto two. Envy is still here. Does have Chronosphere back up in seven seconds. They can wait that long. Witch Doctor Ultimate out as well. Doing a lot of damage to MSS with that maxed out Maledict. Could be enough to find a kill. Burrow Strike connects onto two as well as Envy was time walking forward. So Lemic creating that space for his team to get out. They thought about the Chronosphere. Dual Scepters himself. Sand King going to die because of it. A little bit awkward, but still fine. He thought he could have uh, wasted like half the duration of the Chrono. Because Faces of Void has actually been chronoing 
sank you most of the time. That's scary. That's scary if you're Execration. They can get away with their... Bottom lane, Ursa got the Enrage off and is going to be able to try and run away at least for the moment, but he doesn't have a TP, so he will be killed in the end. A high price to pay for the Lich kill. Probably just desperate. He's uh, the mentality I need to create space for Age of Mage. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about the Faceless Void going for the Agonite Scepter next? It's good. I think it's a little bit back in our team fights, is how often they can cast Chronosphere. It's perfectly fine. And it gives them a lot of HP. HP plus Frost Armor, it gets a lot of physical damage. Excellent. Excellent. So. Would you be worried at all the fact that we haven't seen too many towers fall by Cloud9? It's been Execration like throwing bodies into them on the Cloud9 side of the map. Nope. Not at all? Nope. All right. They have pretty much all their heroes are good against like BKB physical damage. You have Faces Void, great lockdown versus BKB. You have Medusa, scales better than any hero here. You have. Stone Gaze goes through BKB. You have Batrider Lasso goes through BKB. You have Doom goes through BKB. You have Lich Armor also like very good versus uh, just tanking up versus these physical damage right click melee heroes. So inherently at a at an advantage going into a later game, and you're not really worried at all. Medusa has gotten past that hard phase of the game. This is just a Sorcerer and Snake just ten damage. Now she's full grown. Up in the top lane, they are going to doom the Ursa, but might not actually be a clean kill as they are going to drop the Dream Coil. Owie in trouble. They find a nice pickup for them, and Ursa will live by virtue of that shrine. So Cloud9 feeding away a kill here, a rather important one, and Nando gets plus 10 to all stats and has his Manta done. A little risky doing that right before the motion respawns. He had... I don't know, gotten off one more Infernal Blade, maybe? Maybe thought EE was going to follow up as well. He was right next to him. But did decide to go for that and put himself in harm's way. James getting towards the Aghanim Scepter for himself again. Uh, Nando actually is going to be able to spot out Envy there for a moment. He does have his Aghanim Scepter done, but they have full vision over this right now. And Envy walking forward. It's just illusions. Lich is coming in as well. And they're going to decide to back out. Wood has so much HP. He went for strength and armor. So very unlikely that he's going to die, even if it jumped by multiple here. He's going to be able to get that Chrono off. That's for sure. Uh, likewise, Fata, very tanky as well. Has decent armor right now. Sitting on 24, not to mention the fact that he gets that 600 mana talent. So, so much survivability built into this hero. All the better to blow my team up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's something they got to be a little bit careful about. And it looks like Nando is getting closer and closer to a Lincoln Sphere. I mean, he is catching up, and the farm rate is going to continue to be accelerated as the game goes on. Do Cloud9 need to think about trying to take down the rest of these Tier 2 towers now, or do you wait for the Roche to respawn in a minute? Nice, yeah, chill. Farm up. Play safe around Roche Pit. No pressure. Smoke up. Who are they going to catch? They are looking right now for the mid lane. RR heading back home, and he is going to make it to high ground. It's a butterfly done from Medusa. And I've seen so many times in these Cloud9 games where they get one of these heroes to just like... He just in front of the... Okay, he got the Witch Doctor. It's a Scepter. Yeah. Raging Potato, Mike is getting out by AY. He could get Doob right here. Oh, no. In trouble as well. And no way out of this one. He didn't get the Enrage off or anything. So double kill coming in from Envy. And now maybe a third as well as they found the puck. Everything in the kitchen sink thrown their way as Envy gets a triple. Same time, Anti-Mage is pushing bottom lane. So they do force MSS back, as well as Fata on the Medusa. And Nando actually going to go forward again. He blinks aggressively. He has the cooldown reduction. He actually is going to run into the Medusa and decides to jump away again. Mimic. Dr. 
himself the Doom. There's the Dust as well. Aoi, maybe in a little bit of trouble. Actually, Yule Scepter, a creep. Not on the menu, and Aoi almost going to get there with the Mana Void, the Blink, and they will use it, find themselves another one. So Execration, it looked bad for a second, but they start pulling it back together, and now Nando has a Lincoln Sphere. Inners, uh, rushes up. Inners is up. Uh, Lasso... Uh, actually, Lasso's back up. Everything's back but they really need Roach. Raging Potato actually teeping down bottom, going for a kill on Fada, but Fada's out. Could have been really scary for them. Uh, and he's going for that BKB as well. It looks like right now, Cloud9, they've had enough of this anti mage. They want to try and put a kibosh on all his split pushing. That being said, though, they're already there, and the Chronosphere is available. They're going to land it on the anti mage. Do they have enough to take him down, though, throughout the course of this? I'm not so sure. So he is going to be able to get the blink away for the moment. Long cooldown. Lincoln Sphere already off the mark. And it is going to be an anti-mage kill. Envy finding it. And Execration desperately trying to push out the creep waves in answer. Very tough for the anti-mage to push here. So many ways to pick them up. Uh, let's see, is Doom going an anti Lincoln's item? Let's see. I guess like a Halberd could maybe be a good answer. I don't know if that's something that he wants to build. More sap, I think, is fine too. Okay. I think Albert's good for him. Look at the heroes he's up against. No. Ursa hates Albert. Well, 33 minutes in, 25 to 10. It's a little bit less of a net worth lead than it was earlier. Only about 6,000, but the experience lead very much into the favor of Cloud9 as well. Tier 2 tower down in the mid lane. High ground left still to claim, and Roshan is up. Uh, the damage is not that good. Another Chrono used. Envy showing the power of the Agnum Scepter. I think a lot of people, are, they hate on the Chrono Sphere with Ags, but... Really? I think it's amazing. Yeah, right? It's really good. Yeah. So you can actually just Chrono Supports and get away with it. Like, a Chrono Kill, like, guarantees... Them. Another opportunity here is the DD room. It's going to be picked up by MSS. They are shadow blading forward. How he wanted to find that kill onto James. He's actually going to walk back forward too, and he does get doomed now because of it. Oh, he hadn't have decided to go back for that one last wave. He might have been able to get out, but does not happen. In the meantime, Nando going to go for split push again and have the creeps here. He knows that Doom is down. Looks like Doom's picking up the Halberd. They want to be able to solo kill the AM, or at least set up set up a kill in the AM. NB again, with Chrono back up. Even though Doom is down, I guess Nando can't really feel comfortable going in again like that. Really great play from Cloud9 here in this game. Um, we've seen, I think a couple people talked about the Lich Shadow Blade before. What do you think of this? Okay, sounds good. It's very different. Oh, they caught Nando. He's in trouble again. He does have Blink away. If he can manage to get there in time, the Link gets your pop, but there's the Blink and he ended up lassoing. I don't know what, but not Nando. Nando's out of there. Is that a creep? I think there's one creep left. He managed to find it. He would have not have survived the IGV test of time. Two hour mega creep defense. Is that what we're looking forward to this time around? Well, he would have misclicked one time and then they would have just lost. Yeah, that's true. There were two units. <laughs> Maybe three. I don't know. That would have been a big kill. They could have forced the buyback right there. Um, instead, it's going to be Execration. They're the ones that are hoping to force back something from Cloud9, but I don't think they're deciding to move. Somebody's going to have to be playing chicken first, and I have a feeling it is going to be Cloud9. Or other Execration. Mm, Maybe not. Are they really backing? Yeah, they were trying to set up for a kill on AM, but AM's not going to bite. Oh, don't go in with both. You could have baited out one. All right. They're this far ahead. Why would you take the risk? Oh, we are basically. What if you're. What if you try and go for the. Go for the racks, and then Puck coils you? Yeah. You're in a really bad spot. I think if that happens, you win TI, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Creation. That would be the start of the comeback. 
All right, well, it has happened before. For sure. What is it sort of the, is that really like the only game plan that you have for Execration? Do you even try and like focus Envy or is it just whoever you can get with a smoke gank? Definitely don't. No, he has Aegis. Yeah. Medusa has cheese. So that's a good thing. Bat Rider? Bat Rider's a good target. Okay. Which is also a good target. Frost Armor is super annoying. Get rid of that hero. Oh, they found him though. Another Kronos here onto RR and he does fall. The most frustrating game of keep away can be ended in the most satisfying of ways by Envy. Just one press of the button. Fata, they're like sort of setting up for somebody to kill in his bottom lane, but they're gonna have to blink away. Fernando again going to push out this top side. Try and see if he can secure his team a tier two tower. Mobility issues on Cloud9, it might just happen. They do have the BOTs on bat, but he hasn't been able to get close to really the Now look at this, the Puck has just been doing such a good job of keeping these lanes pushed. Along with also Lemic, who's now going to try and cut the creep wave. If they can manage to kill it off, it would be quite good for Execration. Since they are going to only have that one lane, and there it is. Goes down, going to be able to kill off the creeps, but the ulti coming in from RR. Envy still does have Chronosphere as well if you want to use it. And now, with backdoor protection, maybe going to start back up again in a second or not. Maybe it's just going to let them really take the barracks. All right, there it is. It should be a bit too much damage, I think, for them to finish off the melee. Nando, deals some damage to the tier three, backs out, takes Ancients, rinse and repeat. Made the best out of a bad situation. Yeah. Nice one. And he's gonna do it again as well. It's one thing I love about this hero. Just burrow strike, get a couple right clicks, and the whole creep wave's dead. Hero's incredibly good at shoving out lanes. He's just so hard to kill, too. All right, Aegis down. Envy no longer holding on to that. They still has the cheese on the Medusa, although it's not in her inventory right now. Uh, and Anti-Mage trying to carry for his team, getting towards the Butterfly. Does run into Fada and is going to have to back out. Man, Daedalus on him already. That does a lot of damage. I wonder what his last item is. Scotty or... Scotty or MKB. Oh, yeah. MKB. Be daring somebody to walk up and try and hit his illusion. <laughs> Uh, levels wise, Medusa is at 25, so we have that plus two second stone gaze instead of the life steal. Anti Mage also decided to take the plus 25 agility, dealing more damage. And last but not least, we have Envy, who went for the plus 600 uh, time walk cast range. So, no real surprises there. I was wondering if maybe it would have been worth it for Nando to go mana void, but I guess he just wants to get more damage. Yeah, mana point's unreliable versus the like, Especially because he this one will pop up. This one. Fata again, able to push out these lanes with impunity. Nothing really coming in the way of him just right clicking the towers here. Although they do break the Lincolns. Looks like they'll back out again. So what are the items that you want to try and get into for Execration that allow you to actually take a fight against Cloud9? You wait for them to TP back to the defending and they have Get them before they out. Base racing right now. Yeah, Rage of Potatoes already got a tier three. They're gonna pull them back in and now they're TPing back with the Doom. Can they find any more? Envy is also up here all in his lonesome. Wait for somebody to walk up onto the high ground. They've already popped the Stone Gaze and also Chronosphere killing off RR. Also Sand King jumping in for that one. Don't think it's going to end up making the difference though. Ragey Potato just so mad wants to kill off that melee barracks, but it's not going to happen. And in the meantime, Envy, can he actually make his way out of here? He might be in trouble. That Frost Armor, it's so hard to deal with. Turns to fight, wants to take down Lehman, because Sand King, nowhere left to go. Envy showing who the carry is. They do find that kill in the end, and looks like James going to be able to pick up the gem. But four dead from Execration. You'll take that one, I think. Pretty happy about that. Frost Armor, I believe, saved that melee Rex, too, from Ursa 
trying to right click it with his over uh John? Yeah. You good? Nice setup by MSS. They are committed if someone gets dragged back to the T4. Yeah. And, you know, anti mage obviously there. You gotta play it as far forward as you can. Does not have buyback right now, which is something to be concerned about. 40 seconds without. And that might be more than enough time for Cloud9 to put a nail in a coffin. They don't have paper. Nor do they have PO. So I guess you can sell all these scrolls and get PO. Still pretty good time. Oh, they pull back in RR. Uh, sacrificial hero in this game. Currently 0-8-6. It's a hard life for a Witch Doctor. Overall, this laning phase was just too disastrous for them. Tato jumps forward. He wanted to take down Aoi, but... It's not really looking like it's going to happen. Maybe Fata here doesn't have died. No, the cheese and the stone gates comes out. Oh, it's so disheartening. And James just trying to stay alive. But the rest of Cloud9 alive as well. And they can just plunk him down to death. Anti Mage is back up, trying to make it happen. Can they find this kill? They buy back on the puck. Mana Boy could be huge. It takes down all of them. Double kill for Nando. Now MSS trying to make his escape. That was what they needed. Can they get any more? No. Eternal Envy thought about going in to help out Pile I Die, but it looks like Pile I Die will be able to get out on his lonesome. Is Envy gonna buy out? Wow, play it safe. Yeah, they really need Envy for the fights. He protects them with his sword. Now they're going to drop the Chronosphere. Puck jumped into it as well. That is really disheartening. And Nando actually going to be able to maybe turn this one back around. He's blinking forward and trying to chase down Pile I Die with MSS showing up. I think Execration need to get out. James has been caught. We'll have the phase shift in just a second, but don't know if it's quite enough damage, or rather escape ability. Well, there's the orb. Jaunts away. Back to his team. If Envy had his butterfly there, maybe they could have gotten the kill. Or he could have just killed the puck, too. No MKB. Faces Void. Execrate is still with a fighting chance, and they go for the Rose right now. There are only four heroes up on Cloud9 and no Chronosphere. All right, all right, all right. Uh-oh. Is this the old Cloud9? Might just be. <laughs> and they are going to be able to get the Aegis onto Nando. We've always known that there was a possibility that this could happen, but about as good as it could have gone for Execration. Getting a little spooky for Cloud9. So if you're Cloud9 at this point, or rather if you're Execration, what do you try and get out of this Aegis? Is it just free farming and, and space for Nando, or do you actually try and like make a, an effort to take racks or something like that? You always make an effort to try and take racks and split pushes. That's exactly what they did last time. They created this opportunity where Cloud9 are trying to defend their bottom T3, and then Execration get jumped inside their base, and they, or Execration jump Cloud9 when Cloud9 are in their base. And the racks lead is actually not that significant right now for Cloud9. It's one range and one melee in favor of Cloud9. But T3s are down, the Shrines are falling, and as we have seen, Medusa is quite vulnerable if Anti-Mage is there. And, I mean, building into this Scotty, it makes it even more the case that there's the potential for a big mana void with that extra little int that you're going to get from that. And they didn't have, get, they don't have the cheese on it. Imagine if Medusa didn't have the cheese on it. Right. They might actually lose this. It's <laughs> You're, you sound, like, slightly shocked. <laughs> I mean, it was a huge lead, um, almost 15,000, and it is down to around 5k. If they botch this smoke gank with a Chrono, go on a Ursa who has a rage pod, Medusa dies, Stone Gate's used early, there's a lot of uh, situations that could arise out of this, out of this uh, smoke. Cloud9 not really feeling it. They're also just sitting on a lot of gold. Medusa has 5,000 gold. Faces Void was around four or 5,000 gold. Butterfly. Whereas you have heroes like NEM who are forced to commit to a buyback because they have the 7 slot and 8. 
I've seen this before. This was a game that we saw a little bit earlier. Now the smoke gang coming from Execration. They might spot them out, and indeed, Raging Potato smoke broke. They're looking for Owie. Do they have detection? Doesn't quite look like it. But wow, no he escape, yeah. Bat Rider and Doom both had uh, buybacks up. It's pretty smart. I think part of that was also the gem that got picked back up by MSS a little bit earlier on. So, you know, that if they did have that on Execration, that might have been an opportunity for a pick off onto the Batrider. Time to push. Wait. They give the Puck. Ursa had it before, but now Puck. All right, but here's the play. Envy looking for the big moment. He gets the Chronosphere, able to catch it onto that Ursa. It's a really big one for him. Lemic looking for the wraparound stun, but it's not going to happen. So they find the kill on the Ursa. He does have buyback. Nando needs to get out of there. And he is going to be able to make that escape. Maybe if they had the cheese on the Ursa, they could have had a much better chance of winning fight. Stun faces away in his illusions, pop cheese on Ursa and turn around, but I don't think anti made quite ready for that fight. He might go for a kill on MSS though. Oh, this would be big. And also Puck is in the area. By the way, got into that 420 GPM talent. They've got the catch onto MSS. He is going to drop. That's the gem as well. And now Nando getting set up to try and take down these barracks. And Cloud9 just thinking about running as well. They don't want to get caught here and end up losing a lane of racks with the MSS buyback. They're forced to retreat yet again. Things falling further into the favor of Execration. Crumbling 9. That is... To say the very least, this has been a very strange game. You just you don't expect it at this level, or maybe you do it the way that the games have gone for them recently. Makes you think whether or not this Lich Shadow Blade is really doing anything for them. Well, he's going into a Silver Edge, I guess. So we'll see. I don't think you get Shadow Blade with a plan on making a big difference with the 60 minutes over it. <laughs> I don't think that's a play here. I mean, what else would he have been able to go for, though? Is there anything that you think might might have been able to like make a big difference in these fights? Sure. Midas, Vlad's, Halberd, Scythe, uh, another Lincoln's. What else? Orchid. A lot of good items. Mech, I guess, too. Mech don't. Yeah. Like that. Right, fair enough. I don't think it, you, you want it is only heals a little bit of HP. Uh, if they didn't have a Solar Crest, I would say Solar Crest is good too. Maybe he gets Solar Crest and Doom can get like AC or something. It's pretty good. Oh, we've another way to pop. Yeah, another way. Eternal Wind, I also think it's like passable. Well, we've uh, eclipsed the 50 minute mark and Execration have been able to build their way back into this game at the back of. A very impressive play from this Nando anti-mage. And now he is getting closer to the Moonshard territory as well. Meanwhile, a smoke ink coming in from Execration. They want to come and contest this as Fata and Envy have already taken down a good bit of damage onto that melee barracks. Owie drops down a ward. Trying to see if he can find him. That is going to break the smoke. Do they have detection though? No. Owie realizing what could come. They decide to all spread out. And Nando will back yet again. Aegis, potential to respawn in a minute and 30 seconds. Yeah, this is... Oh, they found Fata. Oh no, if he gets blown up right here, they've got so much damage that it's going to be a blade mill, but it's not nearly enough, at least for now. He ends up falling. James picks up the kill. He has buyback. But if you have to use buyback at this state of the game as, well, Envy, they're trying to take down Raging Potato and he's not going to be able to do it. He's also going to end up falling down very low and looking like he might end up dropping a lot of damage coming out from that Chain Frost. Envy does manage to back out and they're dead now, but Nando hitting hard, trying to find the kill. It's not going to be enough. That is going to be a jump away coming in from the puck. He's able to blink out away from MSS. So a three for two exchange. But it was the two big cores from Cloud9 that went down, and Puck's still alive. I think uh -oh. Ursa got the Enrage off before the Chronosphere. 
need a second to talk about stuff. Uh, apparently there's some bladder issues. Hopefully it all ends up working itself out. Void has 20 kills. All right, fantasy points coming up for uh, Envy. I don't think anyone's like the EES or Days 1. I think he was <laughs> the lowest enough. scoring core, what I heard. Yeah, I heard that as well. Um, That's EE for you. Lowest on day one and two. Was the best of times and the worst of times. <laughs> All right. Well, we talked about that halberd earlier. That can make the difference. I think that we saw him use it on uh, the anti-mage in that last engagement. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So he, he used it on bottom when they were going. So as far as like the perfect fight looks, that time obviously they were able to isolate the Medusa with both the Puck and the Anti-Mage. Uh, things kind of devolved from there. I think Envy ended up using Chrono uh, and didn't quite kill off the Ursa. Um, in your eyes, what, what are your dream fights looking like for both teams? Dream fight is huge mana void up on Medusa before she casts Stone Gaze. Uh, and it hits the rest of the team. That's a lot of damage. Also, some way to deal with the Doom. Doom, Doom, Day. Either a Lotus Orb. Lotus Orb. I don't know who built it. Like super low on slots. I guess it would shock her. He has it queued up, but he has to. Or kill the Doom before he casts it, but I think that's possible. And yeah, maybe. Highlight I don't again. Uh, they just popped that chain frost, but I think it might still be the death of Pylai Die. They end up missing on the Dream Quill, but they still find the kill nonetheless. Oh, now he's going for a Scythe. Okay. Yeah, the Scythe would have been more useful to Shadow. Even having Ultimate Orb would be useful than having Shadow. <laughs> oh, he went the 150 damage talent. Yeah. Okay. I guess that makes a little bit more sense then. Still. Okay. I've tried every single possible way to make the right with the Lich before, and it is just horrendous. Fair enough. Uh, Lee Mick trying to escape here. He does have a Yule Scepter, can try and make his way out, but doesn't look like it's going to happen. Double the gems for double the fun. MSS picking him up. You just don't get any right clicks off. Your attack range is garbage, and. Are you really going to right click an anti mage and an Ursa? Like, these heroes <laughs> would just stare right back at you and laugh in your face. I mean, it is it, nice damage. This attacks me just too. How many times does it attack? 0 0.9 seconds per attack. It's off. That's so low. <laughs> oh, it is a lot of damage. Yeah. That one surprise hit could do well. Well, 120 GPM, having like Lotus Orbs to. Like backfire on the abyssals, having Lincoln's on your uh, Medusa so she doesn't get mana void. I think it's far more useful than the potential to surprise someone. 150 extra damage on your Lich right clicks, yeah. Yeah, they have so much armor too. Like these are agility heroes that you're 22 on Ursa inside base and 27. Then also you have to deal with. The overpower, or sorry, the enrage on Ursa, so minus 80% damage. So right, you're plus 150, plus 30. Yay, and then Anti Mage has a uh, butterfly. You go for a vision, that was for all of them. just has butterfly. You're not gonna get any damage. Maybe Blood Gold does I look at all these illusions too, like it brought down the range racks to about half HP, um, just with sending those in constantly. Showing the way that Execration want to try and play this game. Cloud9, they're going to smoke forward for this and see if they can possibly find an opening, but they don't have vision of Nando, who is going to Manta Style, send out those illusions again in a second, possibly just head on back home. Is really going to buy him? Do you think it's worth it to go and Axe on top of a Lincoln's for him? I think he looked like too much damage. I was just considering whether or not he would relax. I guess that's 10 minutes worth. Wow, and speaking of Puck, he's been able to build into a full refresher. He has his uh, pick up whatever he wants. You ready to see some Venn Diagram Dream Coils? <laughs> oh man, 
that would be so sick if you had like refresher and adds and force staff and you like coil them force staff them out and you coil them again and force staff them out <laughs> that would be great <laughs> oh that'd be an ungodly amount of stun that would scepter that coil been. duration eight break stun duration is only four. only nine and a half seconds of or nine seconds of stun no big deal yeah that's pretty absurd well, Roshan next on the menu. It looks like NB will go in here and they'll scout it all out. Now, do they make him pay for this? Nando is pushing down this bottom lane. Would love to be able to get a lane of racks for his team. Uh oh. Batrider walks up to Roshan. They know something's up, man. Going out there. But yeah, Roshan is down. Does this give enough space for Fernando to take down the range barracks? Looks like it will. He's going to blink away. No. Doom nor Chronosphere were going to be used to be able to stop that from happening. Caught him. Oh, they caught him. In some trouble now. They do have Pylai die and MSS in the area, trying to keep him alive. RR in some trouble as well, but they jump forward and BKB is out for MSS. They drop the refresher. A second Dream Coil is there as well, but they've caught on to that puck. Nando is still there trying to kill them off. And Fata, too much damage. He's going to fall, but they do have Envy now trying to burn through these guys. It's only the Sand King, though. And then now that they're actually bouncing around the coconuts, it's too much. He can't time walk it off. He wants to find another kill onto this doomed anti mage, but I don't know if they can bring him down in time. Muted for a little bit bit longer stunned up and killed off 98 seconds with no anti-mage but the rest of execration is alive and well Medusa's also wow Medusa with cheese just getting owned by anti-mage bad matchup as it gets later and later James right clicking that's bold sir yeah pucks for 20 this is causing a lot of trouble double coil on Medusa how do you get it no way good. Oh, no. Envy getting bash stun. Manta style trying to get away. The Yule Scepter lift up. He's taking the damage and dropping. That's only the Aegis, though. And Owie is sitting here as well. No Doom online, but does have the Halberd. And with the Chain Frost going out, they'll finally be able to deal with all these creeps that are sending in damage. As well as taking out the Cardis. 260 HP on that melee barracks. No, Rain Drag's on top. Please, someone TP back. No, sinking. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, he wants to keep that thing alive, that's for sure. Space is void, perhaps going in. Envy, are you going to be able to get this kill, you cheeky bugger? I've been hate. Yeah, you have. Yep, I'm going for it. Oh. Phase shift. Oh. Where, where are you going? What's happening? All right, well, he's still probably going to get the kill here. Ah, uh, Yule Scepter, maybe not. Sanky shows up as well, and he's going to be able to get out. And now Puck wanting to take it to him. James is a crazy guy. Deny! No. <laughs> Sometimes your tendency is to just deny. <laughs> Sometimes it's just like an automatic reaction. What do you call those? Auto something? Um, automatic responses? I don't know. I didn't take anatomy class. Oh, God. Ranger X not that big. Certainly. Instinct. Is that what it is? No, yeah, I think it's what the term is. It's not knee jerk reaction. My vocabulary. I mean, it's been a, a fairly long day so far, and we still have one more series to go through. Yes, sir, we do. This is the glory of the group stages. You just get inundated with Dota, and like until it's popping out of your pores. It's awesome. I don't speak any other language now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's frost armor. I would be very surprised if he didn't take the plus 35 frost armor. That thing is ridiculous. 44 plus armor on a structure. Ugh. Try chewing through that. So what you really need is the ogre in it as well, the bloodlust them. And plus <laughs> towers to make it bigger, yeah. make it more intimidating. Hey, I'm big and bad, you can't even touch this. Doing the MC hammer strat. Okay, anti mage, you have 8,000 gold. Foot. He's no, he's no 10 solid. That's true. But the other thing was that Rezo didn't win in the end. That's something to consider. He also was a to do so. Right. I mean, in terms of, like, ways that Execration need to win this one, is there anything that, like, is it just getting the next Roche and being able to run it down in that way? They need to be able to tank it. I don't know. 
because either Stone Gaze or Chrono is going to get off in a mass skill team. You can't really avoid that. And they also need a better way to deal with the Doom. Like, he has no way to get out of silence. No PK, but he's constantly being able to Doom the highest priority target in ATP every single time. This is setting up for a brawl. They found MSS, able to catch on to him. Chrono only connecting the Ursa. Already BK beats, staying alive for the moment. Now Puck going back in again. He ended up refreshing, and they're trying to take him down. Where's the anti-mage? They already bought back on the Batrider, and now running away. They're stone gazed for a long time, but Cloud9 has oh. no follow-up. He broke the stun. Oh, he's down forever, taking a ton of damage from Raging Potato. He will get four staff. The epicenter a little bit off the mark as well, and MSS is back. He can't afford to die right now. He already bought back, and they're continuing to chase. Looks like they will let the rest of Cloud9 go, but that was a scary moment indeed. Now it's Execration up 12,000 at Earth. Look at this graph! <laughs> Never underestimate C9's C9. C9 ability to throw. This wasn't even really good. I think, uh... I, they were it, up 15,000 almost. I think they just disrespected the anti Okay. They weren't able to set up on him very often. They have multiple ways to set up on him. Like before he had Vinkins, which is a pretty long time. Doom, Lasso, Chronosphere. All those are pretty good. And this Shadow Blade on Pylidite. I don't know if anyone knows very good reason and convinced me why Shadow Blade is better than any other 2700 gold you can spend. I'm all here. Well, I'm not going to try to, but I'm sure there was a reason. And fear was bad. Fear is bad. It's true. That is true. It's the wisest and the eldest. It's no it, no worse. I'm such a good one. Still not quite at that level 25, but look at these illusions dealing the damage to the tier 3 tower. And there is not an answer for that. No tree in this game. Um, we do see Nando, who's up here in the top lane, ready to split push, and he's actually dealing a lot of damage to that tower, and nobody is coming to respond to him. The Owie is eventually going to be here, but he doesn't have Doom, and they pop the Manta style, trying to take him down. Bottom lane, there's more battles of Bruin, and Anti-Mage still getting what he wants, gets out, the tower down to basically nothing. Execration split push is working. That was just a coil to keep them from going to the tower. One HP tower. Yeah, just throw him. <laughs> Oh. Oh, he changed to AC. Now, do you like that build? AC is way better effective HP against MKB. So if they have MKBs, yes. If you're gonna get hit by the MKB. Like if Dusa had MKB, you probably would need to change it up, but if you could void, uh, I think it's over. Okay. Doom now going for Silver Edge. 63 minutes in. And we are still looking like it's Execration who have been able to take the lead. It's still experience into the favor of Cloud9. Those items come out that make it scary. Do you think the Silver Edge changes the dynamics that much? Nope. Just more uptime. Like, disabling his uh, spell shield's not that important. I, I, you, you can't use uh, Chronosphere. I suppose Chain Frost. Okay, Lynch, you need 25 years. Other 25s, we did have the Bat Rider picking up the plus 8 second Firefly duration. Uh, also, Doom has been able to get into the plus 2% Infernal Blade damage, which is actually a lot against these tank oh, heroes. Oh, correct, with Silver Edge, that's actually huge. Okay. Wow, that's the, that thing is Infernal Blade. 7% <laughs> with, without magic resistance. Yes. 2660 HP. So 7%, it's like almost 200 damage to take. And then reduce my damage. So, so let's see. So 150 damage. Oh, wait, plus, plus the base. Plus you have 40 damage. So 200. Yeah. That is uh, quite hard to deal with. And how long does that last for? Four seconds. 
So around 800 damage. Chronosphere used. RR almost caught, almost killed. Is going to get Glimmer Cape trying to stay alive. And actually, Nando, he's shown up. He's going to take down Envy instead. He does not quite get the Mana Void off. And now the Refresher comes out as well. Ragey Potato finishes what they started. The Chain Frost is bouncing. And Ragey Potato forced to jump away. But the Epicenter comes through. Only caught on Defada. And not enough damage to take him down. Instead, it's going to be Ragey Potato fallen as well. Two down. They both have buyback. But Envy has caught Lemic. MSS running away from him. They're going to need to buy back now. On the south side of the fight, it's James who's trying to cut the creep wave and keep the rest of the team back. They do have two catapults, though, enough to push. Finally, Medusa can right click. Bada is exasperated by the sequence of events this game. He eventually gets a fight where he can sit back and just puke away at everyone. And that Chain Frost destroyed them. Frost Armor Struck. Good luck in a base race. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty absurd. Chronosphere is up right now. They kill Raging Potato. Likely game over. But on the flip side of X, <laughs> oh, Or even just Spook and Fada. They do have the ward there. They don't want to reveal that they know it's in the area. Chrono on to three. Envy comes through in the clutch. Taking out that Ursa. Most likely to die here, and that is no buyback either. Nando, though, he's actually shown up on Envy as well, and Envy doesn't have buyback. Is he going to fall next? Oh my god, he's fallen low and is going to die two minutes without the Ursa or the Faceless Void. Now also controlling Howie on this Doom. Do they have anything else to follow this up? Nando can jump back in if he wants to. No Abyssal Blade, no Manta Style, and it looks like no fight. Cloud9 a little bit afraid, but James is showing up. He's able to dodge away from one. They still can't chase. MSS doesn't have anything outside of a four staff right now. They're waiting for all their cooldowns to come back up, and Pylite died looking for an opening, but not finding yet. Bata gets jumped on. There's the Manta style. There's the Abyssal. Lots of damage. Still not dead. James, the lift up on the Yule Scepter, making sure the Doom can't get down there as well. Lemic starting to get dropped as well. They get the epicenter a second time in this short period, but Aoi is going to indeed fall. James looking for more. This retreat is taking forever. They buy back on Doom, and they pop that Stone Gaze as well. And finally, I think that Execration will be forced back. Roche is up. Oh, uh, Nando constantly swapping in and out his Battle Fury. Next efficiency, thought that was going to be game over, but not enough heroes died there. Fada escapes with a hair on his chinny chin chin. Doom is becoming increasingly. Oh my god. He did not go for the Devour Ancients. I think Doom being pure damage versus the anti made. I think the Doom defense is very well worn. And here they go. Are they going to be able to get the jump? MSS? Oh, Lemic, he's breaking the smoke already. And they pop the BKB, turn to fight after him. And if he falls, it's not the biggest deal in the world. If they can finish off Roche, and they are indeed going to be able to do that. So Nando Aegis on him. Everybody else gets out, but Sand King is gone for two minutes. No buyback. <sighs> that's tough. I don't, not sure if that's worth I guess potentially they could have just lost the game right now. But not having Sand King for these fights is... They only have a few stuns. I guess they can cask bounce talent. Oil, but... Oh, lion one. RR going out with the gem again. Wants to get a ward down. Keep his team alive. And the rest of them are up here. MSS scouting it all out. And can pull in one. Oh, who does he decide to go on, or does he want to go on at anybody? They're all up here, and he sees them all as well. Blink away the jump out, Execration, realize the danger. Nando, after pushing out this creep wave, is forced back as well. Okay, we have 10 slotted anti mage. <laughs> he actually has 10 slots. This is, this is happening again. Yeah, it's all over. And even if they take the barracks, it doesn't really even matter all that much. Well, he's going to jump out. Lincoln's down as well. Tier 3 tower dead. And 70 minutes in, who's to say what's going to happen in the next 10? Are they going to fight with uh, Sinking? Still not up yet. Oh, looks like Envy is going to get a double damage roll. That's big. He has a ton of agility right now, so 500. Oh. 
more lich is better. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly lich. The frost hammer is OP. Super OP. Medusa, by the way, has 10,000 gold in the bank. Oh, that's me here. I'd like to see it. I certainly would as well. Uh, Nando got the Lincolns popped. Gets another one applied. Uh, James also has a bazillion gold for himself. I was kind of expecting to see some more Dagon gaming, but I guess Refresher Ags is better. I think so. It's proven to be pretty useful. Ethereal Blade might be very useful for... Actually, Ethereal Blade's not useful for this point. Oh, just... Scythe? Scythe with Hex? And Refresher? Yeah, like... <laughs> so it's giving Moonshard to Ursa. Oh. What if you could give Moonshard to that rich. <laughs> that would be sick. <laughs> Alright. Balling out of control. Deck out a whole creep wave. Or have the worst misclick in the world. That's like a rapper's, like, you know, I'm so rich line. I'm so rich, I put moon shards on my range creep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. I buy it. I'll come out with it soon. Make it all do it. <laughs> I'll have to work on that. <laughs> okay, Age is still up. No, oh, anti mage. Nowhere in sight. MSS. He's waiting, looking, wanting to find somebody. They know where he is. I think a free range rack. Oh, oh, wait, this is a, that's a melee rack. Wait, did you slip that ball? I mean, it's yeah. the same thing you were saying before, right? Like, you know, they have less to defend now. Yeah. But they, they're not as good as defending as IG Vitality. And Veach is looking for that perfect moment. Double damage. Not up on him again. Invisibility rune. Is he going to get a high priority attack here? Ursa still has no buyback for one minute. And V. Oh my goodness. And instead it's going to be a smoke out. They want to party. Creation. Looking for an opening. Does not look like they're going to find the Medusa. There's a chance they find Owie here. They're all wrapping, and I'm not seeing much of the Cloud9 heroes. Owie is there. They have a gem. It is on, not James. And yeah, now Owie realizing what could happen. He's going to end up heading up towards the north, although also Lemic is here. Oh, faces Void, BOTing in onto the mid wave. He does not have any invis anymore, but he could still catch Raging Potato. Yes. Oh, Raging Bata potato. there. They, they caught the catch. He didn't get in Rage off either, so he's going to start to fall pretty quickly. Doesn't end up getting the Chronosphere off, but I think this should be still the death of Raging Potato. He does have cheese, actually, and if they decide to fight, this might work. No, he didn't pop the cheese. Ursa's down. They get the Chronosphere on a two. It's all falling apart. Puck also going to drop. Eternal Envy making the plays that they needed him to down the stretch. Two minutes, no Puck. A hundred seconds, no Anti-Mage. Cloud9, they decide not to throw this one and finish this off in spectacular fashion. That's GG. Faces point is so incredibly difficult to deal with in the late game. Envy playing very, very well, I would say. Uh, one of his best games yet that I've seen in this tournament. And he had just really solid chronos. He took a, a, did a lot with his farm and Pilot Eye, big part in his victory. Wow. Well played by Cloud9. 21 5 and 16 was the final kill score for Envy. We ended up making it happen with the Aghanim's ultimate. So as far as the group stage and what this sets us up for going forward, tomorrow's going to be a really important matchup of Cloud9 versus Hellraiser, which I think is in the final round of competition as well. Uh, and obviously, if depending upon what happens throughout the rest of those games that day, uh, it could all come down to that. But I've been Lyrical. Merlini, any final thoughts before we move on to our last series? Nope. All right. We're heading out, everybody. See you guys in a few with our next matchup, which is going to be TNC versus Infamous.